Uh, if you look at our program, we have three people who are going to host us today. Uh, but I will start the session by taking you through um, the program and giving you brief details about what Wikipedia is. I know we have some of you who are new. Uh, we are going to do today. Uh, AM, we are supposed to be here logging in and also registering our membership. So uh, please, if you can, I know I know your name. You can just give me more details about yourself in the chat. Just feel free to do so, like your phone number and your institution or your profession, what you do. Uh, so this particular item was supposed to be handled by me and Liberty. Liberty is here to join in, but he'll be with us soon. Uh, from nine, we are going to do opening remarks and then introduction to Wiki for Education. Uh, then also the Africa Wiki Challenge 2024 editor zone. So I'm going to take us through that in 20 minutes. Um, the, also the agenda. And then by 9.30, we are going to listen to Bernard as he takes us through on how to create a Wikipedia account. I know some of us might not be having accounts right now, but we are going to see how we can do that so that we have accounts so that because we can't do anything without accounts. So we shall have a session where we are going to be taken through that. Now, the moment when he finishes by 10 a.m., we shall have Chris Liberty coming in to take us through on how to create a Wikipedia article and also uh, related to the wiki, to the Africa Wiki Challenge 2024. When uh, Chris finishes, we shall have uh, Bernard coming back to take us through, uh, to walk us through on how uh, we can edit articles. So, uh, so that's how, how our, our menu is going to be today. And then we shall have closing remarks and the way forward for everyone so that we know what we are supposed to do from now. So if uh, without much further ado, allow me to share my screen. I'm going to go to the internet now that we can know what uh, Week for Education is, but I'm going to start it from uh, Wikimedia itself. Eh? So, okay. I'll be sharing my screen soon. Just to hold on. Lexi, you're also most welcome. Is everyone able to see my screen now? Oh, maybe it's coming. Could be there. Are you able to see it now? Please let me know if you are able to see my screen. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chris. I know all of you now are about able to see it. So this is the Wikimedia Foundation. That's why we are here. So what is the Wikimedia Foundation? It is uh, the umbrella body for everything that you we call that falls under Wikimedia. That is Wikipedia, uh, Wikimedia Commons, and many, many, many other uh, projects. But mainly here today, we are coming under the project called Wiki for Education, which is specifically to do with um, the education bit of Wikipedia. Um, what do I mean? I mean uh, training you on how to use Wikipedia very well, how to create articles, how to edit articles, how to use them to teach others. You might not be a teacher specifically, but you are a, you, you are a trainer in some form. So uh, this is the project that will allow you to learn how you can use Wikipedia to train others, no matter the... As the, 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 the field of study. So that is a week for education. However, the Wikimedia Foundation is big, as you can see here. It has so many projects under it, as I mentioned, a few. And it, it works in five, I think, six major languages, as we can see here. We have English, we have Arabic, we have Chinese, we have Fran French, we have Russian, we have Espanol, which is Spanish, and then German, the German language, but also it has so many other languages, as we shall see when we go to Wikipedia. Wikipedia is in so many languages, even Uganda is there, and the other languages are coming up. So what does the Wikimedia Foundation stand for? They are telling you here that the Wikimedia projects, all of them belong to everyone, so you are a part of it, and feel comfortable to be a part of all Wikipedia projects, and your data privacy is respected when you deal with Wikipedia. Uh, then people like People like you keep Wikipedia, Wikipedia accurate, 
and also number four not all wikis are wikimedia so there are so many people who have heard about wiki 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 so don't think that everything which is starting with the word wiki is wikimedia okay no there are other wikis that are not wikimedia but that's 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 it in brief wikimedia is the umbrella body for all wikimedia projects so Wikimedia has projects to do with the photography, with the audio. It has other projects to do with text, like metadata, like Wikipedia. So we have a Wikidata. That's another project. As, that's part of the foundation. We have other projects to do with the projects called Wikilabs Africa. Other projects called Wikilabs Monuments. For those of you who love photos, those are your projects. You will hear about them later. Uh, how does the Wikimedia Foundation work? So it normally works through groups. For example, in Uganda here, we have what we call the Wikimedia Community User Group, Uganda. Okay, This is how the Wikimedia Foundation works in Uganda. So everyone, and I hope that you will allow yourselves to belong to this, every Wikimedian in Uganda, uh, would it would be nice if they are volunteering through the Wikimedia Community User Group. So this is the user group that we go through uh, in order to connect to the main Wikimedia foundation now this user group is run by volunteers just like me or just like you uh, and all the projects that we run the information is kept or up the support on what we call the meta page when you see here at the at the top here you see the word meta so that is the site where we go to put everything that we do so it's an open site so long as you have an account you can come here and edit and then this is our landing page. So this is the home where we are right now. If you're interested in what events we run, you would come here on events and projects. You'll be able to see that. So let me open it briefly. So right now, as you can see, we are running the Africa Week Challenge 2024 Editathon, which is our main activity today. However, there are also other activities that, are, that have been going on or are still ongoing. If you go through this list, you'll be able to see them. Where you're interested, there's normally a link for you to click on and register or take part, okay? So there are so many other activities, like you see Glam Wiki, you see Wiki Loves Folklore 2024. If you want to read about what happened or take part, the links are here. Uh, we have the Uganda Libraries Geo Quest. We have the One Lib One Ref. All these are activities that are ongoing. Sometimes you can look at the dates. For example, you see the wiki gap is, uh, was, was done between 16th March to 16th April. If you had wanted to take part, you would come here and get this update and also be part of it, okay? Uh, then we have the wiki Luganda, wiki gap, other things that are happening still. It was still in the same period. We have other activities coming, for example, from 11th May to 30th uh, of June, we have the wiki for human rights, so Wikidata, Wikimedia Commons, and all others. So often, uh, related articles on Wikipedia are either stubs or lab. So I'm reading this as it is because I don't really need what that is. So the main reason why we are here today is to contribute and make sure that most of the articles that are about Africa, eh, that are about Africa, uh, we give them more visibility by correcting any mistakes that are there. That's why we are going to edit. And where we can, we are going to create new articles, okay, in, the, in, in on the theme. Uh, we have a list of those articles that we are going to edit. Chris uh, Bernard is going to take us through that when the time comes. I don't want to rush that. And then we shall see how to do that. However, before you do anything on Wikipedia or on Wikimedia, you must first have an account, okay? That's why we are going to go through the process of creating an account. And that will be handled by Chris Bernard. Okay, so this uh, this particular campaign this year runs between 25th May, which was last month, and it will conclude by 30th of this month, which means we have around only seven days remaining before this uh, concludes. Now we're a bit late, uh, but we can still make a contribution. So the theme this year is educate, educate Africa. Uh, sub-theme, Nurturing Minds for the 21st Century. And you can see some of the photos here uh, where you can. You will also be taking some photos and uploading them. They might appear here. And the main focus this year, focus topics are uh, educational challenges in Africa, 
educational landmarks in Africa, like Makerere. We shall, we shall see how we can contribute with photos of Makerere University. Educational programs in Africa. Organizations promoting education and skill development. And we have educational policies and initiatives. Academic institutions and universities in Africa. Scholarships and financial aid in Africa. Uh, innovation is in education and revenue generation. Then vocational tra training and skill development. There are many topics. Uh, education infrastructure and technology. Investment in education. Industrialization of education in Africa. Manufacturing and distribution of educational resources. Uh, challenges and opportunities in African educational systems. Uh, uh, global collaboration in African education. Uh, education agreements and partnerships, then challenges in implementing education. Chris will take you through this, but if you have any questions, there is this frequently asked questions area that I would interest you in going to, you can just go there and I was, was supposed to be here to facilitate, has arrived now. So I'm going to give them a chance to talk to us before I tell us how we proceed. So Chris Macholi, are you on? Boris, yes, would you like to say something to the attendees before we go ahead? I'm called Macholi Chris Benach. I'm part of the Wikimedia User Group Uganda. Okay. We are trying to increase access to Morning in progress. Access, access to free to free so that everyone can have information. So you're being here, it shows really a great effort you're trying to do so that everyone can access this information. And today we shall be trying to learn about how we can contribute this information so that, mm. yes, it can be accessed by everyone. Everyone can learn from it. Hey. Audrey, I'll hand you by now. <coughs> then come mm -hmm. in later. Can give another person an opportunity to introduce. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Chris, thank you so much. Uh, Libert is still connecting with us. He will be with us soon. Just give me one second to... Yeah. Just mm -hmm. give me one second. Eh? Uh, Celestine. Celestine, Akwai, do you want to say something? Okay, so in the meantime, let's take this turns to introduce ourselves so that we know each other. Uh, since Chris has finished and call you and you speak to us, tell us who you are, a little bit about yourself as we proceed. So Celestina, why? Would you like to say something to us? Hi, everyone. My name yes. is Celestina and I'm from Ghana. Okay, you're most welcome, Celestina. Thank you very much. Thank you for tuning in. Okay. Uh, then uh, Charles Agenonga, are you able to talk to us? As Charles prepares, uh, Felix, please also get ready. Charles, talk to us. Hello, Charles. Charles, are you able to say something? I saw you are unmuted, but we can't hear you. Um, Felix, are you able to speak? Yeah, my name is Felix Antoine. I'm from Ghana. Felix, you're most welcome. We have a number of Ghanaians here today. That's wonderful. Okay, then um, Geoffrey Katerega, as Dennis also prepares to, Dennis Kasuzi to talk to us, Geoffrey. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Drake. Let me see if I can get my camera on. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, really happy to be here. Great to see the yeah the Africa Wiki Challenge really happening in Uganda. And, uh, my participating. Uh, really uh, looking forward to see 
um yeah educational content about uganda uh you know getting uh, more coverage on, on wikipedia and thanks uh, drake and everyone for for organizing also good to see uh yeah, colleagues from Ghana joining. So my name is Geoffrey uh, Katerik. I'm also uh, with the Wikimedia Community User Group uh, here in Uganda. Um, yeah, I've been participating or contributing to Wikimedia since 2014. So yeah, 10 years for me uh, participating and contributing to Open Knowledge. So yeah, really happy to be here and uh, joining everyone. And uh, yeah, looking forward to grab some articles to uh, to edit as we do this campaign. Thank you so much, Drake. Thank you so much, Geoffrey. Um, next one in line now was Dennis, but I think Dennis has gone. So uh, uh, I think uh, we have George, George and Basilio. Hey, Dennis, oh, you are on. Dennis, please talk to us. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Kasos Dennis. Um, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I'm going to mute him, Bazira. Bazira, you are talking. You are going to talk next. Okay, he has muted. Please, then go ahead. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, my name is Kasuz Dennis. I'm a student from Kabale University in Uganda. Um, I think uh, this is my first year of interacting with the video. I've been seeing it uh, for some good years, but. I haven't uh, taken some initiative to really interact with it. I think this year it was my first time to interact uh, and there's some other person in OSM Uganda is called uh, 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 Michael Karuba. Yeah. That's okay. when I got interested in video and started doing so. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Dennis. You are, you are most welcome. Uh, uh, please, George, go ahead. Thank you. Hey, good morning, everyone. My name is George Mbazira, student of Nkumba University. Mm, and I have the privilege to meet you all. Mm, I will have uh, more words later. Let me first keep following. Thank okay, you. Good. You're most welcome. Uh, Charles, we are still waiting for you. Anytime you're ready to talk, you can talk. I know you are unmuted, but we can't unfortunately hear you. So as you correct your issue, Joan, Joan, are you yes. able to speak to us? Yes, Joan. Yes. Good morning, Drake. Good morning. How are all of you? We are fine. How are you? I'm okay. We would be actually happy if you can put on your camera where possible. If it's okay, if it's not, it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's so not like possible. Mm. Okay. I've been having a crazy week with Jose Tema, which, so which uh, I just got back home really late. So, But yeah. I'm here. I'm happy to be here. Okay, you're most welcome. Okay, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Moses, as Peter prepares, Good morning. Good morning. My name is Moses Odeke Osamai. I work with Moon University in West Nile sub region. That is our work precisely. I'm still learning more about uh, Wikimedia and Wikipedia details. So I am almost at the grassroots level. But I'm glad this, I think, is my second event I'm engaging with members. I hope to learn quite a lot today. Thank you. Okay, you're most welcome. Um, Peter, please, as Tekla prepares to talk to us. Thank you very much, Derek, Drake, and other colleagues. My name is Peter Tuha. I'm a librarian from Kari University in southwestern Uganda. Uh, concerning Wikimedia, um, I have not been very active, but I have an account, and I I remember taking part in the one of the challenges, I think, was it in 2021? But since then, I've, I've not been very active, but I promise I want to resume again. I want to be very active and take part in all these campaigns. Thank you very much. You are most welcome, Peter. Uh, Tekla, please. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Tekla Atplase. 
Uh, I'm a librarian at Uganda Christian University and a Wikimedian since 2022. Um, I've contributed to Wikipedia a few times. I haven't been very active as well, but I hope to be back on board and I'm glad to be part of this campaign. You're most welcome, uh, Tekla. Uh, Chris has joined, but I think he will talk to us later. I don't know. Chris, are you able to speak? Uh, yes, I am. Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm Chris Liberty. I work with uh, Ashinaga Uganda, but I've also been working with Drake on some of these programs. I'm glad to be here with you. Thank you so much, Chris. So I hope there are some of us um, are here who are, are tuned in, not only with our phones, but also with our gadgets, because remember, this is an editathon, okay? Uh, we are here to do work. We are going to be editing. We are going to be creating accounts. We are going to be creating articles. So if there's anyone here who has tuned in only with the phone, if you can, try to get some, some time and prepare a gadget with you that you can able to really contribute today, even though the contributions don't end today. I have seen some communication from Chris or eh? that's all. Let me see. This was a rook, eh? uh, or rook Emmanuel. I think he's not able to speak. I don't know. Uh, Emma, are you able to speak? If you're not, I'm going to read your message. So he says he's a fellow program coordinator, Missions Publics, Uganda and also part of the Wikimedia user group uh, Uganda, and he's traveling now, so he's not able to speak. So, yeah, that is who he is. For those of you who don't know him, uh, he's a volunteer with the Wikimedia community user group Uganda. So I'm glad that we all know each other. Others will introduce themselves as they come in. Uh, so we are going to prepare ourselves for the next session uh, by uh, Bernard. So Bernard, if you are able to proceed, alert me. Uh, then I will give you the right to share. Uh, thank you, Drake. I'm ready. Yes, please. Yes, you're ready. Yes. Okay. I think I'm going to stop sharing. You'll be able to share. Don't worry. Let me just stop my screen. Please proceed. Thank you. Is there any sound or? Oh. Hi, Drake, yes. can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, please. Oh, sorry. So, um, we are going to talk about how to create an account. However, Wikipedia can allow you to contribute without creating an account. But in such a scenario, your edits won't be won't be won't be shown up so you can't be able to see your contributions because it's it's under an ip address basically contributions made to under an ip address and are open contributions however when you contribute using your username those contributions are on your dashboard and you can be seeing how your progress is how you're contributing to wikipedia that's why we encourage users to use to, call, to create an account before they start their editing. 
So you'll be wondering, how do I create an account? Yes. Uh, to create an account, you just need a phone, a mobile phone with internet connected to data. Or for better experience, uh, desktop mode is the best. So you can use a laptop. What do you need to do? Just go to your browser and type in Wikipedia. Can someone confirm if you see my screen? Yes, we can see it. You just improve on your sound a bit. Okay. So you can go to your your browser. Could be Safari. Could be Microsoft Edge. Could be Chrome, depending on the browser you use. You search for Wikipedia. Result. This is the Wikipedia page which we need. It's among other first results according to make my sound better. Sorry for that. we're not hearing you eh? right now so on wikipedia we have different languages wikipedia is written in different languages basically here we are trying to use english however in uganda we have a language which is on wikipedia that's in uganda wikipedia you can also explore our it but for today's context we are be exploring how to create an account on uh, English Wikipedia. But when you create an account on anyway on Wikipedia, it can allow you to access all your Wikipedia, all of your Wiki sites. Could be Wiki Commons, could be Wikidata, Wiki, Wiki Voyage. You just need one account to be able to access all those Wikipedia projects. I had logged in, I'll create, I'll log out so that I can demonstrate very well how to create an account. So on top of Wikipedia, on your right, there's an option for creating an account where you're able to create your account so that, yes, in case of any contribution you make, it can be seen. In case you don't have an account, yes, you can create. In case you have one, you can log in. So we are assuming we don't have an account and you need to know how you log in. You go to login Wikipedia, log create account. And when you're creating an account, they will ask you for username. Uh, your username is what someone can use to identify you. For example, me, my username is Macholi but you can also use any username you may wish to use when you're creating an account. I'll give an example I'm creating and I'm using a Chris256. Yes. Sometimes you find out that when you're creating an account, some names are already taken up, for example, Chris2567, the human LS is using that username. So you have to make a way, uh, it should be unique so that no one else is using that username. So I, what can I make it? I can choose to add an M so that it becomes unique. So in case you enter it and it's no one has used it, you're free to proceed. A password, you're recommended to use a unique password which is known to you because in a situation you're using a uh, a simple password which can be easily guessed could be a date of birth. Someone can easily hack into your account and use it to make contributions which may be deemed not fit for Wikipedia. And in such a situation, you are either suspended or blocked. So 
try to make your account so unique that someone can't easily guess it and and figure it out. So um use one. This is basically for practice for demonstration. And also after entering the password, you have to confirm it. Uh when you're creating an account, you have to put in your username. This username can help you in case you forget your password and you need to, to recover it or you forgot password and you need to reset it. The username, the email address is what they use to help you reset your account. So what you do, you put in your username, your sorry, your email address uh, here in where your email address section. And when they send you a message notifying you about creating an account, ensure that you confirm that email address so that it's in the system. And in case you forget your password, the account can be easily recovered by the help of the email address. So from there, you're required to put in the security check here. Depending on the word they will give you, because the security check is not the same. Today, they have given me B O Y S M O C K. It will be different for you. And if, even when you refresh, they give you another security check. So what you do, after filling in all that information, you can proceed to create account. And you'll start using Wikipedia. Your account will start. They even send you a message. You're welcome to Wikipedia. And in a situation where you have an account and you just need to log in, you go to log in. Go to login and you put in your username, which you created, plus your password, which you also created during the time when you. Creating an account. It's a, it's been keep me logged in for one year so that you started from rather than every time you have to login when you want to edit or to write anything so you can just keep you logged in for up to one year after that you can now log in i'm also going to talk about when you log in yes you have logged in maybe you want to start on the contributions however this is a campaign and we encourage you to join the dashboard so that your contributions are tracked. The campaign, we have a, a campaign which is national, which is happening in different parts of Africa because it is Africa Week Challenge. And we also have one which is a Uganda one where you are narrowing down to Uganda. So we shall be joining dashboard for the virus campaign. The one for Uganda, We have lost you, Chris. Sorry about that. Can you now hear me? Yes. Yes. For Uganda, you have for joining the Uganda campaign dashboard, just need one. So we shall be, let me share this link in that group so that you can access it and you can easily join the dashboard, the lock dashboard for Uganda. How do you join the dashboard? You just need to access the link, it's trying to load. When you get to the link, I'm sharing this in the group for those who haven't joined. You can join. I'm going to share it. You can proceed. Okay, thank you. 
So when you're draining, there is an option for strength load. Sorry for this. My Let me try to press down. So Drake will share the link in the group. And when you tap on that link, it will take you to a page like this one. For me, I've just joined. However, when you go to this page, then here below the, when you scroll on the home page of the dashboard link, which they are going to share with you, there's an option for joining program. When you tap on it, then I'll join. So it will prompt you to join the campaign. You will tap on join campaign. And it will ask you. It will ask you to accept the dashboard to access all your information both on Wikipedia and all other pages or miners. I just joined me because I had already joined and I was, but it will prompt you to uh, ask you to authorize it to access your information on various week projects and you can authorize it. From there, your contributions will be able to be tracked during the campaign. What about, remember this is a, a, a general campaign where it's happening in different parts of the country, different parts of the Africa, and you may be interested to join the global campaign or the Africa campaign. Event. There's a raised hand. So I think um, when the hands are raised, I think, is it okay they can speak? They can ask the question. And we proceed. We can answer it straight away, then we continue. I just wanted to inquire on procedure whether we are going step by step with you or we are first following your demo, then we shall follow through with this. I don't know. You can go step by step with me. As you do it, you can open this page in the real time in case you have basically in case you have two different devices. Basically, you could be having a phone and also a laptop, so you can join, you can follow together. As I demonstrate, you can also do it. Or you can come back and practice this, this what you are doing. So this is the event for the Week Africa Challenge. And to join the dashboard, you just have to come to this event. So this is the event for Africa Week Challenge. For you to do what? To join the dashboard, you just need to register for this event. And how do you register? There is an option for register for the event. I'm trying to sign up so that I can. Let me just pass it. Cancel my registration so that we can register together. Okay. Okay. This is the event, and when you register, this will pop up to help you register. You can fill in your information, and you can choose to register privately or publicly. Under registration, you can choose 
to turn off, that's when you want to register privately. Or you can choose to turn on if you want your registration details to be public. And in this registration form, they ask you about your gender. You could be a man, a woman, a gender, binary, whatever your gender. Your age, your profession, we have different professions listed here. In case you are doesn't exist, you're free to say your profession not included. And they try to know how, conf how confident you feel contributing to a Wikipedia project involved in this event. In this event, we are contributing to three Wikipedia projects. That is Wikipedia, where we shall be writing and editing articles. We have Wikidata, which is a structured form of data where you create, it is created. And we also have Wikimedia Commons, where you can upload your media, could be photos, could be video, could be sound, related to this campaign. So in case you're on, you prefer not to say you free to do this, in case you have never contributed, yes, feel free to be honest, because this information can help in the follow-up process, to know who can be helped, who might be finding some challenge, and in case you have some experience, yes, you can. In case you're confident that you can contribute without any support, yes, that would be great. And also, we may need to know which Wikimedia affiliate are you connected to. Would be a chapter, a user group, a thematic organization. And for me, I'm connected to Wikimedia Community User Group Uganda, which is the the organization or Wikimedia Fred I'm connected to. And we'll take you to be part of our Wikimedia community user group. So you're free to use this as the organization you're connected to in case you're a Wikimedia user and you're in Uganda. So after that, uh, for me, I'm saving, but the, for you, there'll be an option for registering. And your details will be automatically added to that dashboard don't need to register for this one and also join the dashboard when you register on the event tool it will automatically add you to the dashboard yes. after layer we have different campaigns which are ongoing and you would wish to join some of the events here we have our the home page talks about we have home participate organize join event and article list Class communication. So we are going to join the event for Uganda. Remember, this campaign is done in different countries. And for us, we are interested in joining the one in Uganda. We have here a list or a table having different countries called Big Ghana and different languages. So in this group, there is one for Uganda, which is here with Media Communities and with Uganda. And in case you want to join the dashboard for Uganda, you will come here and tap on the dashboard. The dashboard link is added there. And you'll be able to allow for that. Address. I think I'll stop here by now and I hand over to you. Take them through the next agenda. Yes, Drake, are you still around? Yes, Amon. Yes, I'll stop here and we go to the next agenda. In okay. case someone has a challenge, you can post in the group and we'll be able to respond. Okay, the next agenda is creating that. Okay, the next agenda is to create articles, and we are going to hear from Chris Liberty. So he's going to use the same account. Just be holding on. Thank you. Hey. Um, hello everyone, I hope you can hear and see me, um, ah, wow, 
the screen was a bit dark and for someone with uh, enough melanin, I think you would not be able to see me. You can put a thumbs up if you see me. Just a thumbs up. I don't see any thumbs up. Good, okay. I am a teacher by training, so usually I want a very, very, very active class, and especially now that it is a virtual meeting. Ensuring engagement is a bit tricky, but I know I will pull it off. I know we'll pull it off. I've had um, introductions from many of you. Some of you are like Brian, some of you are experts at this especially people like Geoffrey Katerega. I shouldn't even be telling him about how to create an article. I should be sitting under his feet. Um, there are very many experts here also. So uh, Baluku Brian, if you need to chip in at any one point, I think you'll be free to do that. Um, Chris Liberty, I work with Ashnaga Uganda, but I'm also a Wikimedian. Um, so one of the main tasks I'm here to do is to show you how to create um, an article. And um, I will want um, from, from already what Drake and Chris have mentioned, um, if any of you in the chat box has an article they have in mind that we can use um, for this session, Please put it in the chat box. For all of you, then we'll choose one. So an article you think you, you have an idea about that you want to write. So put it in the um, chat box. See. Oh, I don't see anything in the chat box. Do we know what we could write about? I had, um, for example, Jake saying we could write about um, Macquarie University, right? We could write about... Um, organizations that are working on education in Uganda, in Africa. Ah, uh, Evelyn Mulunji wants to write about Fenerbahce Mathias in Puga. Interesting. Okay. See, um, let me get two more chats. Um, so I'll begin picking. Peter Atuha, thank you from Kabale University, right? Peter, are you there? Yes, I'm on. Mm. Amazing. So in education, what would you run what would you wish to write about? Or which article in African education would you want to improve, for example? Just out of out of your curiosity. Corruption. Corruption in education? Okay, so he says corruption. Yes. All right, so refugees in Uganda, wildlife conservation, yeah, chats are coming. Okay, now I'm going to share my screen and then start um yeah okay hope you can see my screen uh so one of you wants to write about refugees in africa mm -hmm. that is a bit broad but maybe we can pick um something around refugees 
So how do we start? Um, we're going to start by going to Wikipedia, the search bar, and then input um, article wizards. And like Drake said, I would prefer that if you if you have a, a computer, open another tab or we'll get off Zoom um, for a bit. If you can't uh, split your screen so that you have um, one open with Wikipedia and another open with um, Zoom so that we do this practically. It becomes more easier. Okay, um, so here we are. So when we get to the um, article wizard, you're going to have two options. And if you want, you could stop me anywhere. I could take a step back or be faster if you think you already know these things. Uh, so here they are saying before creating a draft article, you can practice first by editing in your personal sandbox. It's a great way to try Mm -hmm. editing without affecting live articles. If you need some help, of course, there is a guide. Now, um, before we even move forward, I would like us to remember that there are pillars that um, Wikipedia considers for an article. If you want to write, let's use an example of Matthias Simpoga. Very, very amazing example. So we're going to go to uh, ensure that that article is not already in existence. Um, and I think I could be wrong, but I think he already has a Wikipedia, an entry in Wikipedia. So if you began by writing about Honorable Matthias Simpoga, that would not be a good choice because he's already, or most likely already has an entry in Wikipedia. So the first thing is um, ensuring that that article does not exist in Wikipedia. So with that, you have to search, um, ensure that Wikipedia does not have that entry. And if it doesn't exist, then go ahead. But also you must write about something that is very, very notable. Um, so if you have, something that cannot be verified by, let's say, uh, credible sources like newspapers or scientific articles, then that becomes very difficult to write about. Because remember, you have to reference in your article. So that uh, becomes difficult to write about. Then there's, an, there's something that Wikipedia calls notability. So you must be writing about something that people would be interested in knowing. Um, let me see if I can find some of those pillars because I think it would be important before I even move forward into uh, the article wizards. Um, <clears throat> stop sharing and take you through those quickly. Okay, so um, yes, I'll take you through some of the pillars that uh, Wikipedia needs to consider for an article to be published. Okay, so these are the guidelines that I want us to look through. Share my screen.
Okay, this is a criteria of a good article. Of course, um, should be precise, concise, and um, intended for a broad audience. This goes without saying, of course, the spelling and grammar should be perfect. And um, the layout, we'll, we'll talk about the layout later. Then number two, it should be verifiable with uh, no original research. So this means it contains a list of references and it is following um, research from reliable sources. Reliable sources exclude things like LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, general social media. And of course, uh, you should not violate the copyrights. Um, then a good article should be broad in its coverage. That means you're exploring all the main aspects of the topic. If you're going to talk about um, Honorable Mathias in Puga, interesting example, you're going to talk about his general background, his education, where he was born, what he's known for, what he's doing currently, what most people know him about, um, then if he's um, a, a full figure, uh, sorry, a public figure, he will most likely have a little bit of controversy, so you'd have that section. So you're giving uh, a whole general rounded approach um, about a person. And then it should be neutral. So it should uh, present the viewpoint fairly without editorial bias, without saying, oh, Gen uh, Honorable Matthias Simpuga is an amazing man. He is the best politician there is in the world. Wikipedia will be looking at you and they're like, this won't pass. And unfortunately, it will be deleted very, very fast. And then uh, they're saying it should be stable, then it should be illustrated, if possible, by media, that is images and uh, audio. I didn't get the um, clear example of what I wanted for that notability, but it should be something that someone is very, very interested in. Okay, I'll pause that and maybe go on to the um, article wizard. Any questions so far? You can put them in the chat box. Okay, um, just as an example, who, who knows how we can find the article wizard? Unmute yourself and just say something. If not, I will pick on you. Um, three, two, one. Okay, so I'm going to pick... Um, Doreen, Doreen Nampala. How can we find the article wizard on Wikipedia? Dorina, I am not there? familiar with that. Yes, I am there. Mm, you're not familiar with that, yeah? Yes. Okay. So I will take you through once again. I am here on the... Um, on the search Wikipedia bar, and I would want us to do this together. So you come here, yeah, and type in article wizard. Uh, Doreen, are we together?
Iya sih, Iya. Um. Hmm. Okay. And then go to next. I would um, encourage you, of course, to practice in your personal sandbox because that gives you a lot of um, freedom because it's um, a bit dangerous to go live immediately. So let's um, practice in the personal sandbox. So your sandbox should look um, something like this. And let's walk together. So it has um, something like Wobsinj, that's my username. It will most likely have a username, stroke uh, sandbox. But this is not the article you want to publish, right? So you would go back and input um, in your um, an article you want to create. We can't say Mathias Simpuga, we can't say refugees in Africa. So we're going to maybe create a direct you have an article in mind. Mm. Okay. So Drake is suggesting we look at uh, institutions of higher learning in um, let's say Africa specifically. Um let's check if Kabale University already has a page on Wikipedia. I think it does. Yes, it does. So what we can do is um, create or edit. But since we want to create, we can't create an article for Kabbalah University. So we need something new that does not have um, an article. Uh, so I would say maybe uh, we go to the list that we that we have of missing um, articles. Mm -hmm. So the list of missing articles um, is on the um, on the dashboard that we can help access um, that we can help create. Um, for the Africa Wiki Challenge 2024. I think you can find the article list. I see corruption in Africa, educational inequality, high dropout rates, language uh, barriers. These are stub articles. And then educational landmarks. Uh, we have um, Cape of Good Hope, Shanghai, Shanghai, Tri National, Asante, traditional buildings. I think for us Ugandans, um, we can find other things that we can create. Let's say an, a, a college in Macquarie University, for example. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Chris is suggesting we write about Kampala Library and Information Center. Thank you, Chris. Uh, so let's do that. Um, let's go here to Wizards. And then go next. Okay, again, I would like to highlight the topic should be noticeable. It should not violate copyright, should be referenced properly. And it should also be stating 
uh, verifiable facts. So I'll move on. Um, I have about 35 minutes. I think I should use them well. Um, so they're asking if I'm paid to edit or if I'm writing about myself or a close person or subject. Honestly, I am not because I'm writing about uh, Kampala Library and Information Center, which is something I am not specifically close about. And I will say I am not connected to the subject. Okay. So I on my screen, I hope you can all see my screen again. I'm seeing uh, Wikipedia article wizard draft creation. They're warning us about users impersonating as volunteers, asking for payment in exchange for assistance. Now, wouldn't want us to be such people. I'd like to encourage you that um, contributing to Wikipedia is um, a voluntary activity and um, you don't need to ask for pay because we are generally contributing to the body of knowledge. Okay, so like I mentioned, you'll have to search, ensure that you're not, uh, if the article you're creating does not exist on Wikipedia. That is very important. Otherwise, we'll spend a lot of time and then find that it already exists. So from my search, I find that it has um, an entry in Wikidata. So even though um, it has an entry in Wikidata, we can create it as a Wikimedia, Wikipedia article, then connect it with the um, Wikidata entry. Okay, so we are free and safe to go ahead. Um, if I'm going so fast, you can uh, ask me to pause a bit or ask for an explanation. And yes, thank you. Um, so we're going to now creating the, the draft article. Now go to creating a new draft article. Anyone who has reached here or who has a question? No. No, we are following. All right, perfect. Uh, let me ask. Um, so I'm going to be randomly picking on people to see if we are following together. Um, Edward Sally. Are we on the same page? Yes, we are on the same page. Fantastic. Okay. <clears throat> so we are going to creating a new article. What happens if I have never edited before? Does someone know what happens? Okay. Uh, Mukwaba Musa is asking, what is the importance of the article wizard? Very, very good question. So the article wizard is um, an interface that would allow you to actually begin a new draft. So it comes with a lot of um, already um, programming that gives you layout of what you can input where. We're going to reach to how it shows when you progress past putting the title and you will see the importance. Um, so Musa, if you still need the relevance of the article wizards, um, after we've explored it, you can still go ahead and ask, but I will say simply, it gives you an opportunity to create a new draft. Um, so what happens if you have never made an edit before? 
and you want to create a new article. Now, uh, I'm going to call on my seniors. Where is the... Ah, yes. Um, Mr. Baluku Brian, what happens if I have never made any edits and I want to start a new... As Brian comes in, let me give an opportunity to Moses or Samai. But, uh, pardon your question. I'm saying what happens if I am I have never edited before and I want to begin editing and I want to use the article wizard. Yes, so for the article wizard, it's okay because you're going to be creating a draft of an article and mm. it is the is usually recommended for most beginners if you're beginning. Yes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it is very fine with the article wizard, but maybe for the bit of server sandbox, you will be mm -hmm. required to have, say, a minimum of 10 edits to be able to move your article from the sandbox into the main space. But for the article wizard, everyone who has just created an account is okay with the editor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Did you have a question? I saw your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to know whether if on our side, we, when you follow your same steps, uh, there will be no conflict with the same article that you're, you're trying to create. Ah, okay. I guess Thank it goes to so personal, personal account or personal, we call it sandbox. Mm, okay. So um, I am using that article for all of us to follow, but it would be very, very, very dangerous for us to all use that very same article. So um, like I had mentioned in the chat box, we would have had like um, sample articles that we have already thought about that we can... Um, that we can select, but we should not all use, um, what's the name? Uh, the Kampala Library Center. We should not all use the same. Okay. Mm. Okay, fantastic. Um, Baluku, if you want to add anything on the editing part, please feel free. Okay. I think we'll move on. Um, create new article draft. Yes, Liberty. Yes. Uh, my network is a bit slow. That's why right. sometimes the words take... Yeah, but uh, to add on the point of choosing the same article, so it's not recommended to choose the same article because um, there is what we call an edit conflict, whereby, say, for example, I've written, like I've started an article, and I add maybe the introduction or maybe, say, the geolocation or maybe when it was founded. So I publish that. So if you find that, say, Liberty, you're, you're editing the same page, so by the time you're going to publish, they're going to show you that the page you're editing is an old page. There is a latest version. So meaning most likely you're going to discard those changes or you copy what you've added there. Then you go and uh, say edit the other, other article. Mm -hmm. so that is, for example, if it is in the main space. But yeah. uh, there is also a conflict where you find that... Uh, you have one in your sandbox and I have one in my sandbox. So when I move it into the main space and also you write yours, whether it is detailed or not. So by the time you move it into the main space, they're going to tell you that this article is already existing. So you're going to find that uh, now you have to copy the text that you've already written. Then you have to go and uh, add it manually within uh, the other article that has someone has already published within the main space. So those are some of the conflicts. And you might find that uh, each one of us uh, has a different writing style. And uh, you can't just go into someone's article, say, for example, say, ah, this one is very brief. 
you copy the entire ad text, you delete it, so you paste there your article. When you paste, when you do that, that one is going to be regarded as vandalism. You can't just delete someone's article entirely, so that you want to put chip in and edit or add those fields that she has not added in there. So the same applies to editing someone's uh, article. You find, since we have unique writing styles, so it's not always, ah, this one has written poorly. This one, uh, no, the grammar, the article, of course, English is not our mother tongue, most of us. We're going to find that at least we are using the English that we know. So it's always recommended that maybe if you see some typos, or maybe you can correct those, but don't delete someone's text entirely because you've spent maybe an hour, two hours, three hours a day when you publish this article. So it's always very important to check whether that article is existing. And so most of the times when you're creating, there is always that car warning. I think on the triangle somewhere, you see, if you're creating an article that is somewhere in the draft, they always show you that there is an existing draft somewhere on this article. So that uh, you end up not wasting a lot of time when you're writing that particular article. Yes, so that, that is it. Back to you, Libet. Thank you so much, Baluku. That was an important addition on where we're going. Thank you. So um, this is where we're at, uh, Kampala Library and Information Center. And just as a reminder, we have a list of the uh, su su suggested articles. We can expand. We can also create new ones. I think we're also going to think about um, Articles for both Ghana and Uganda that we think are still missing that we can add, but you have varying options. Some of you are librarians, you can dig very, very good information and then use it to improve the Wikipedia articles. Existing on the, on the Africa Wiki Challenge for 2024, you can improve them or create new ones for your case. So moving forward, we have um, already here a draft, and they're saying draft Kampala Library and Information Center. Now, this is how I usually begin an article. I go to something that is already published in Wikipedia that may be related to the very same and look at the layout and use it for my for my own, um, so that I do not have to create a new layout entirely. Of course, the titles may be different, but if we find another library and information center, let's say in Kampala or in Ghana or in Kenya, that would be very good. That would be a very, very good, um, a very good area to begin with. So you have, um, them side by side and use them to um, create your new article. So let's say there is a library and information center. I'm going to Wikipedia and then get a library and information center somewhere, which is on Wikipedia and use it to, to create an article. I see Memorial Library. Okay, I'm actually going to use National Library of Uganda as a sample. I hope you can still see my screen. Let me share this. So what I usually do is I split my screen so that I have both the um, article I'm writing and the one that I am looking at to give me um, to give me, so now I'm looking at uh, National Library of Uganda. Stop and then share again so that you can see it with me. I don't know how to show both split screen. That is a skill I should learn. Uh, so we see the National Library of Uganda, they're showing when it was established by an act of parliament and the partnerships they have. Here we have the, the photo and the map and the exact location when it was established, the collections they have. 
more photos and then other titles um oh no 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 subheadings i think this is an article that could also be uh re-edited to add maybe nine and like i had mentioned you see also these are people who may be very important in the national um library of uganda and then like i had mentioned some of you may be already scientists and uh, librarians or authors and and writers you'll have to reference properly and then this is a bibliography something they could have um consulted or not but it's important then of course we have here the um, the categories that it falls under and they're showing us this um, article was last edited the 29th of april 2024 i would say this is an article that you could also be interested in improving or restructuring or um maybe putting a few headings and subheadings okay <clears throat> so where would we start from for the kampala library and information center we would of course go to um google put in a google search and get uh, the main sources that it brings for us here i'm going to do that so that you can keep seeing this screen so there's Kampala Capital City Authority has already written about it because it seems it's um sort of subsidiary of the KCCA and Library Technology Guides has also written about it. Uh, we can't reference LinkedIn. We can't reference X. We can yes, we can reference um Foursquare. And yes, so these are sources that we would use to get more information about it. So Kampala Library and Information Center, also known as KCCA Library, was popularly known as Kampala Public Library, one of the oldest libraries in Uganda. Okay, so we'll start. Um, to create general information about um, the library, something like Kampala. So I will keep on sharing as I learn how to move the shared screen. Okay, so it says something like uh, Kampala Library and Information Center. And like uh, Brand said, we have different writing styles. So if someone is writing differently, it's, it's all variety is actually a good spice of life. So I'm going to write in my own way. You may write in your own way differently. So, okay. I uh, would say, when was it established? Um, it was established um, in accordance with the KCCA Act of 2010. I would like to know when it was established. Um, was established on this day as a In accordance with the SCC Act 2010. But what is it, first of all? So it is um is best library sorry public libraries
in Uganda. It was established in accordance, blah, blah, blah. This, this gives a general view of where, of how, and when it was established. I will, of course, finalize the exact date. So I want to be quick um, with referencing. This is not going to be complete, but I want to show you how to, for example, reference. So I have copied the source. We had all seen it was from KCCA. And then I want to add what reference uh, mostly, especially when I think it is an easy and straight uh, website. And then I'll say create, move with me, see where it will go. Yeah, uh, library, Kampala, for better city, retrieved on this date, and then insert. So it should show something like this, like this. Um, then we'd want to have a sort of background to expand on this as a, a subheading. Um, so we'll come here and make it either a heading or subheading. I think we'll put it as a subheading and then we'll have something like Hopefully they have partnerships, something that we saw for um, for the National Library of Uganda. So we're going to go to make this a subheading also. Um, what else could the library have? Maybe would say they have sections or because I've seen it has two libraries, both adult. Um, if it doesn't, then we could have this too. I'm glad I'm talking to librarians, some librarians. Who wants to add something? We still have a few minutes. Um, which other section do you think would be for a library or an information center? No? Okay, check my chart. Ah, yeah, services. Mm -hmm. Information services. Okay, let's put that. Fantastic. Thank you, Musa. Operating hours. Fantastic. I think that could include in the that could include in the background. Okay, I'm heading. So now that we've created this, we are going to come here and input the full details to expand on here. We'll have the background on when it was created, what it does, where it's founded. And you could start easily by lo looking at the um, at the map or where it, it's founded. So in the services, we saw that, um, where is it? Yes, we saw that it has uh, two, two libraries and it is public and it serves both. It has both the um, children's library structured to serve the young population, four to 12, children, then edge in the edge bracket of three to five may be accepted on a condition that they are accompanied by an adult. Opening hours, like um, like Moses said, and then there's an amount that you pay daily. And yes, there is an online portal for payments and an an outlay for services that they provide membership ETC. Then they also have events and activities. I think that could be included in the, um, in the services. Or we could have events um, and services. 
So they usually have community reading tents, mobile school library services, school visits to the children's library. Then the deer drop everything and read that is supported by the Ministry of Sports and Education. Then school library spelling bee and reading space. Okay, so we're going to expand on this um, and then ensure that we have enough resources to back it up. Um, I'll use this source, the second source that I found. So currently the library is located at City Hall. This is very, very important information. So again, avoid um, copying and pasting, but I'm going to put it here so that we can use it to, um, to expand and rephrase. So, um, Kampala Library and Information Center. is located at Kampala. Uh, okay, we can put KCC and go back and put it here in the brackets. KCC headquarters. Bracket City Hall. I'm trying to rephrase this so that I don't look like I copied directly from their website. Yeah. And has um, branches. I've seen that the Lubaga division is the one which is, um, yeah, most active. The Lubaga division is one of the functional branches. Um, okay, so I'll paste this, but again, rephrase it differently. Kampala Library and Information Center is located at KC headquarters in City Hall and has branches um, around the city with um, the Lubaga Division. Now that it is a long line, I cannot change it. One of the most functional branches. Okay, so we have already expanded here the KCCA Act. Those are things that I wanted to go back to. Maybe let me pause this so that we do not, it does not be labeled as an orphan. So we'll now come here and link these to the Kampala uh, Library and Information Center to, for example, Uganda. Mm -hmm. So when you select this, we'll have um, an option for linking. And then when you put Uganda, they will bring options. Uganda in its country in East Africa or go Tanzania. Of course, we need this, which is a country in East Africa. Now it already becomes blue. So if we put KCCA, Kampala Capital City Authority, it is going to be also blue. Now, now that we've referred to the KCCA Act of 2010, we're going to So that whoever wants to read more about the KCCA um, Act that was created in 2010, recently amended in 2019, but since we are using the 2010 one, we'll go to maybe URI, 
and, re and uh, reference that act. So here I have um, a link you may not see. So I'll try and put this. I hope this would work. Um, KCC Act, KCC Act. So that we have a fully um, resourced and referenced area so that we have this um, after what we had already put and then our site. Yes, we couldn't make a citation for you. You can create one manually. I think in the remaining minutes, let me see how we can use this um, manual resourcing. They will ask you for the last name, first name, source date, title. Okay, so I have this as, um, I think, Yuri. I'll use Yuri, which is the low resource. I know most in Uganda. Okay, I found it. So I would input this manually, maybe the name of one who wrote, that would most likely be the author. It is, will be able to create uh, a reference for yourself. That will be easy you to reference because oftentimes this automatic referencing tool may not work since uh, for example some of the links can be broken and it becomes difficult for you to reference um, but I found the act on Yuri fingers crossed it works if it doesn't then we'll have to do that manually but I won't do that now. But just the services, I think there's a lot that we could write about. I'm just going to list them. Then I will come later and add uh, because my time is running out. So we have this, which I can later write about. We have mobile school services, which I can later write about too. So personally, I usually make it like um, sort of dumb so that I have a mind map of what I want to write about and then come back. Sorry. Then come back and um, expand it. I wanted to talk about AI, artificial intelligence, and uh, article creation. Briefly, Wikipedia has no tolerance, zero, zero tolerance for copying and pasting from sources. It has zero tolerance for no paraphrasing, for you not using your voice. So I would dissuade you from directly, for example, copying from chat GPT or Bing or whichever AI you use most and copying directly and pasting into um, this space. Of course, you can um, use AI to give you ideas, maybe give you a structure, but I would encourage that you use your voice because apart from that, it's going to be very robotic. It's going to be shallow. I would encourage if you want to use AI, I am not stopping you, but use it to give you ideas use it to maybe allow you rephrase a few, um, to structure your article, but I would encourage you to use your voice and um, ensure that what you're writing is something that you have an idea about. If you've done your research, you'll get the information and um, avoid the temptation of let's say getting to let's say chat and you're like all right create for me an article about um <clears throat> kampala library and information center it's going to be very generic it's going to lack a lot of um the human touch 
that we want that would be very helpful in providing more in-depth information that is helpful for Wikimedians. Um, we were not able to go so far. Uh, I think I've overshot by about two minutes, but I'll entertain any questions or if one has an addition and this is the time. I can use one more minute, Drake, right? I have a question about the referencing style that mm -hmm. is used. So I'm wondering if we use like a specific referencing style also, like can I write about an academic question? For example, if I if instead of writing about a place, I want to answer an academic question and then use like write an article that is more structured. And then also with where we are supposed to write our drafts, can't I do something on my laptop, then later copy it and paste it there and then upload it to the general, you know how it is called. Yeah, those mm -hmm. are my Okay. Points. All right. Thank you. Um, very, very good questions. I will start. Um, so Wikipedia, generally, I think... Um, uses the APA style, which um, is usually author date. Um, but they give you structure, they give you a set of questions, then they will style for you the referencing. Uh, mm -hmm. So that shouldn't be a major concern. But yes, I would say Wikipedia generally uses um, APA. But you can restructure, let's say, MLA, Harvard, Chicago style to ensure that it fits um, Wikipedia's default styling. But they do not necessarily ask you to reference directly. They will ask you for information and then rephrase, reference for you. You asked about if you can write a paper, like an academic paper in on Wikipedia. Yeah, I think you can. Although the language will be less academic because generally Wikipedia is targeting uh, the general audience. Of course, um, you can present your academic material in a way that it is palatable for most people. So that wouldn't be a problem. So long as it hasn't been written, it hasn't been, um, doesn't have an entry on Wikipedia, that is of course no problem. Then your other question, I think, was about um, Adrian. What was your third question? It was yes, about if you can if write all. Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. You can write on um, on your, let's say, Word or any other um, software that you use to create Google Docs or whatever. But it's easier when you've already mastered the formatting and um, the categorization of how you would want to write. So you can actually have, okay. let's say, a Word document of an article you want to create. But I would say the first thing is get familiar with the formatting of Wikipedia articles because it's an in-house style that I think Wikipedia wants mm -hmm. to maintain. So knowing how to structure your, your content is very important. So if you're using the article wizard or the sandbox, that would give you a way to draft your article because you can even have this and um, publish later. So it doesn't mean that today I must finish this. I can save it as a draft and then come to it later. But if you want to get expertise and maybe be able to write in a Word document, I would say first practice in on the article wizard on your sandbox. And then you can have the confidence to write in your um in your word. Where do we where do we put a description of what you have done? Peter, could you explain more? Um Question. I think I don't understand it clearly. 
Uh, thank you very much. This is always done like in campaigns. I don't know whether it is no longer done because I uh, just used it in, I think, 2021. I don't know whether you have updated that option. Of of saving or description, like, or description yes. of what you've done. Okay, yeah. so you mean when you finished editing or when you're publishing? Okay, so let's say publish... Uh, yes, okay, you can still see. So let's say publish, yeah. So they will ask you, uh, this is the description you mean, right? Peter, is this yes. what you mean? Yes. So when you're yes, publishing, yes. you will say, maybe you've created an article for Kampala Library and Information Center. And if you're also editing, they will ask you for the description of what you've done. Fantastic, very good question. So you add what you have done to an edit or when you're creating an article. Yes, so you you still remember your things, Peter. And yeah, you're welcome to this challenge. Um, I can't wait for your contributions, um, Doreen Nampala and then Peter Atfa. If there are no more questions, I would like to hand it over to Drake. Thank you so much. I think I have hand, uh, hand clap. I, I want to get the hand clap before Drake asks for it. <laughs> Come on, guys. Appreciate my efforts. Thank you. Please. Thumbs up or reactions. I, if I don't see that, I won't leave this screen. <laughs> yes, I can see. Okay, now I can go. Thank you so much. Of course, thank you so much. So we've just had that session on how to uh, create Wikipedia articles. Uh, according to our agenda, we are supposed to go into the next session, which is um, on how to edit. But before we go to, for that, um, I would like to know by show of hands, how many of us have accounts? If you can just put your hands up by putting a thumb or something, to uh, let me know. OK. Uh, Chris has, OK. Then Moses has an account. Um, I can see who is this. Oh, the hands are coming so fast. Okay, Julie, you have an account. Uh, Infinix Hot uh, 11S. I don't know you kind of help us and add your name to something that we can understand. Peter has an account, Musa does. Okay, uh, a number of us have accounts. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, if I missed you, you could raise your hand again. Uh, but of course the hands are going off after some time but at least some of us have accounts already yeah that's so good to know uh the next session will require you to have an account if you don't have an account you could take some time and create that account okay there's nothing you'll be able to do that will matter when you don't have an account of course you can contribute but you lose we will lose track of what you're doing if you don't have an account so, okay uh, about jemima patience okay thank you for correcting your name now i understand who you are I know we started when we met many people are moving off, but we are going for the most interesting session right now, and it is going to be led by Bernard. Bernard, are you able to hear me? Bernard? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so oh. uh, I will allow you to proceed now with the next session. Thank you. Uh, Drake, someone was asking if there is a break for people to stretch a bit. Uh, I don't know. But... <laughs> I think if if they ask for it, we, we we are obliged to do that. So we are going to give you up to 11 to stretch a bit. I'm going to pause this recording, but once we reach 11, allow us to proceed. Push. Isn't it okay? Thank you. All sir. five minutes are not enough. Oh, they're enough. Thank you. So let's um proceed from 11. Thank you so much. You could take some break, take some tea or something. Thank you. Or some water, actually. i see you at 11. I'm going to pause the recording now. Chris, my fellow Chris. Chris, for the collaborating how people they can create a natural using with wizard article wizard so after creating an article we shall look at how we can edit the existing article 
basically we create new articles and we we edit existing articles. So you may be wondering, how can I edit an article? Drake has worked on something and I feel like, yes, I can have some more information I can add into this article. And yes, it is possible. So what you need, I'll start sharing my screen. I'll also talk about someone was asking if she can write about a, research, a question related to his academics. Yes, we have a Wikimedia project called Wikiversity. It's a project where you can write about your any anything academic related. It could be or could be something like. But this one wrote about Petroleum nearly. And for it, the principles, the policies are not the same as for Wikipedia. This one may not need so much referencing there, like the other side. It has different principles. If you're interested, you can explore further. It's called Wikiversity. So we shall dive back to editing an article. Uh, Drake, wa uh, sorry, it is Chris was writing about an article about Kampala library information and you find out that maybe I can also have some more information I can add in, in this article. What do I need? In case you have a link, you can search for it. You can just get that link and go to it or in case you can search for it, yes, you just go to your Wikipedia in your search bar, there is an option for searching and you paste the name of the article which you're looking for. So I'll scroll slowly to see where is the article I'm looking for. To just go direct to the page. Paste it. This is the article which Drake was, sorry, which Chris was writing about. And you find out maybe he's, he hasn't published, but still I can check on it and I publish or I write, I add on what he has been writing. I'd be like, maybe I got some more information or oh, I want to look at it. He made some type of, basically if, when you're editing, you can feel free to share with your friend. You'd be like, this is what I've written. You can look at it because basically just the way you can see you're doing your research and you may need someone, a third party to help you in reviewing this article. So it's the same way on Wikipedia. You can jump onto someone's article and you see what you can add, what you can remove. And for this one, the Kampara Library and Information Center, it is still loading. However, we can see what we can add, which Chris has missed out, and what we can improve like that. Basically, I will, just like Brian said, I wouldn't encourage you to go and just delete someone's edits because he gave it time and maybe where he went long, you can edit and rectify. Rather than deleting it, all the work he has been doing, creating articles on it really takes a lot of time and if you just out of the blind delete someone is that yes you may find it's okay but to the person whom you have deleted the article he may be demotivated to write more or he may get biased so we try to encourage people when you find an online someone is that for yes you can you can edit it but you shouldn't delete everything he has worked on I think that's clear. Oh, my internet is kind of slow. Let me try refreshing so that it can come out the way.
So this is the article which Chris was writing about, and you find out he hasn't finished, but he'll surely be like Chris. You can look at oh, he made some errors somewhere, and you feel you can rectify. How do you go by it? Just come to this article, and you go to edit article. When you tap on edit, your browser will, uh, your editor will open. When you're editing, we have two forms of editors. We have the source editing and uh, visual editing. Basically, for me, I use visual editing because it's good for me and it is user friendly. So when you look at what he has wrote, yes, he has done a good work and you feel like I can add something or I can improve something. Yes, Kampara Library and Information Center is one of the oldest. However, it's, it may haven't finished, but in the first sentence of your, the first, or the title of your article in the body, it's usually bold to, to distinguish it from the sentence. So how do I bold? You come to your, you highlight what you want to bold. So in this case, I want to bold Kampara Library and Information Center. I'll come to this A where I style. And on this, we have different features. We have bold, we have italic, we have more. So you can see superscript in case you want to power Subscript, you want to put something down. You need, you want to add a computer code. You want a straight through. You want to underline, maybe you want to magnify it, make it big or smaller, depending on what you want. And in this instance, I want to bold this one. So I'll come here and I bold it. And you find out that I've got some different information. So I want to search about Kampara Library and see what else I can get about it. Could be about when it was formed. Yes, I'm looking for more information on Kampara Library and Information Center. These are different links talking about Kampala Library. I'll go with this one, the info. You what does it talk about Kampala Library? So trying to load it. As the page loads, we can get back to see what we can also add another information which we know about. Oh. And also you can uh, usually advise you can open the results in different tabs. See which tab different information can be found in different sites. So you can choose open it in different tabs. Just a minute, let me try to sort my tab. Yes. So this one has come and tell us Kampara Library and Information Center, also known as KCC Library, was popularly known as Kampala Public Library. So this is some new information I've got about Kampala, about the Kampara Library and, Pub and Information Center. I'll come to my article and add this information. 
Kampala Library and Information Center, also called also called KCCA Library. It's also called KCCA Library. So I'll add this information, also called KCCA Library. However, you find out there is more name. It is also called Kampala Public Library. So I'll include all this information so that in case someone is searching for Kampala Public Library, can still get it or in case someone is searching for Kampala Library and Information Center. So that I give it, I add all these different names for is access bid or Kampala. So I've edited this article by adding in more information which we had not found out. However, after editing this information, you need to do what to cite every information which you add in Wikipedia. So I'll go to my page where I got this information, which is this one. I copy the link and come here. Where, where am I putting this information? I'll put it at the end of this sentence because it's where this one is. So I'll I come here. This is an option for citing. I tap on site. And you first confirm is that information I'm adding there? Is it already being referenced? Because you might find out that he may have found that information or he might have access to that website and he had used it to cite some other information. So you can paste your link when the formation is here, when that site exists, it will show here. In case it doesn't exist, I'll add a new citation. How do I add? You can choose automatic, which I'm going to use. You come here and paste the link which you have got from the other side and create. Uh, Wikipedia does a background search and you'll be able to get the results about this. And usually the results, is usually uh, about this information which so that it can be someone can access this information it brings about the title of the page the source where the, the url code the author search information so i've done a public search and this is what i've got and i'm going to do what to cite it here so I've got some new information to add on and I've been able to add. Can someone, can you hear me? Just confirm that you are on the same page with everyone. Yes. Yes. So uh, I may have got more information on this article after reading up. It's one of the oldest public libraries in Uganda. Yes. And you can find out Kampala Public Library is one of the oldest public libraries in Uganda. Where did I get this information? I've cited the page where it's wrote, it's written that it's one of the public libraries in Uganda. Whatever you should you write or you add on Wikipedia, you are required to reference it or cite so that in case someone is doubting your information, you can also go to the page and it confirms. So you find that it comprises of two libraries, that's the adult library and the children library. So I uh, want to add this information, where is it? So you find out that the, the person who was editing this article, he also wrote it about uh, Kampara Library and Information Center is located at Cases Headquarters and has branches around the city. Okay, however, I'm coming here. 
Kampala Library and Information Center comprises of two main sections, the adult library and the children library. So after writing this information, I can support it by citing the source of this information. And the source where I got this information is this same page which I've got as an information. And what do I do? I'll go back to my article and I add the citation. However, this time round, we have already used this citation and it's already here. So I don't need to add it again, but I'll reuse because that information is already existing. So how do I, maybe just for you to know, you can come here and paste the link and this, this reference will pop up. So I'll just tap on this and this reference will be added here. I don't have to go again and cite it again. I go to automatic, I create that. As long as the page you're citing, the website or the book, whatever you're citing is already being used for young readers between. I'll go back to my article. What does it talk about the adult? What does it talk about the adult library? And what does it talk about the children library? So the children is structured to serve young population in the age of 4 to 12. The children in the age bracket must, may be accepted on condition that they are accompanied by an adult. The adult library is structured to serve the population in the age bracket of 13 and above. So uh -huh, I'll come back to my article and he has added this information. So what do I do? He has added, but he has forgot my bit to cite because he had not got time, or maybe he has forgot because it becomes you may easily forget this small small information. That's why we ask you, uh, when you finish writing your article, you can share it with someone so that it can go through. Maybe you never know. So be able Hi, Chris, to guide Chris, there is a hand. Yes, can you talk about it? Yes, it's free. For how many times could you use one source to cite? According to what I know, you can use it to reference different numbers. As long as you're not adding it in the same sentence, in, in different places, as long as the information which you're citing exists on that website or that page. I'll take an example of a book. You may be citing a book, and in this book, there are different chapters. And you find out that you're using one book to cite over 20 points. So there is no limit on how long, according to, there is no limit on how long you, how many times you should use the reference. You can use it several times as long as that information is existing there. You're free to use it. So I'll use it also here because this information is found the other side. So I'll come here and add a reference. Give me, that's done. Oh, we can also look at an existing article to see what we can also add. So after adding this information, yes, I'm still looking for more information to add. I've been finished and I will stop. So let me check on the page for National Library. Uganda National Library to see how it was done because this information you are adding, someone else might have written it and you can go there to, to the phrase to see how you can do this. It can act as your template. In this page, on this article, you find out that there are different sections. We have a section for partnership, 
They also have also a name, section for two also, and this section for reference. However, in our article, we had not yet added section. How do I add the section? Uh, section is basically it's like the title of the chapter you're writing about. I'll come and highlight my word, which I want to make the section. This is background, and I want to make it a section. I'll come here and choose. We have paragraph, heading, sub -heading, So I'll choose it to be an heading. And when you choose it to be an heading, it will now appear as a section. And also events and service, I might choose to make it a section so that someone can easily see. So what do I do? I will highlight what I want to make as a section or what I want to make an edit. And I come here, I make an edit. I can also make my the, the particle pattern sheet also an edit by highlighting and coming here, I go to edit. So you can see that our article having different sections, just like the one for Uganda, National Library of Uganda, is also having different sections from partnership, from C also. So let me also add a part for C also. So C also is usually a section which is added so that for you can also see on the other side and see what that uh, could be like. We are trying to that article exists on Wikipedia. That article will pop up here, and you can now just tap on it. This article will now become blue. This text will now become blue, implying that if someone tap on it, he can be directed to that page. We can try it out. We shall try it out after seven. And also libraries in Uganda, let me also highlight. After highlighting, you come here to the link symbol and you tap at the link. Wikipedia will do a search. In case that article doesn't exist, it will appear in red, implying that article doesn't exist. Or there may be an issue with your typing, so you may try changing the that Sentence might be, you never know. Uganda libraries, Uganda libraries. Let's try this in case it exists. So you find out that you don't have an article which try to write about all libraries in Uganda. So you might choose to write about the under one article. So we shall eliminate this one. Let's see if. Kampala State Council so it exists on Wikipedia. We shall highlight and also we come to the symbols. We check to confirm if it exists. We find out that we have different articles for Kampala State Council, but we also what we find here. I think is not, I think you meant you meant Kampala Capital City Authority. Kampala also. Oh, So it will pop up and it is telling you we have Kampala Capital City also, which is a local government unit in Uganda. We have Kampala State, Kampala Capital City Authority Football Club, which is a Ugandan football club. However, our interest is on the local government unit. We tap on this and this word will become below. Let me just copy it. have added different links so that in case someone is interested in knowing about this, you can just tap on this. So I might feel like, let me bullet, how can I bullet my point? Just the way you can see this one, try to use points as a bullet, and I may also want to bullet my point. So what do I, do? you highlight the subject list and the numbered list, depending on what you want, I might choose to use a bullet list and they will be bulleted, or oh, I might choose to use a number list and they will be numbered. Depending on how you want your article to look like, 
the choice is in your hand. So for me, I'll leave them as a number. All right. After there, in case there is any last week, also I can. Let me add Makelele University Library. Makelele University Library. The same way I did to the other articles, I will highlight my article until where it ends and I come to that the library, all this academic library in Uganda. So I might choose to add this one. Which other information, depending on the information you get, you can add many, a lot of information. You don't have a limit of how many information as you can. After adding your information, let me see what you can edit here. Kampala Library listing is located at Kampala KCCA headquarters or city hall and has branches around the city. So you find out that he has made some type of here. So I can come around and add in what is what is missing without deleting his words. It's talking about as branches around the city. Kampala has two branches, two branches around the city. That is to say, or which include, that is to say, or I, the You have a team. question. You have a question in the chat. So when you have time, we do. I'll be responding. So you'll find out that yes, uh, you had missed out something and I've included around the state that is to say the Lubaga Division Urban Council Pub Public Library as one of the most functional libraries. It's also known as KCC Library and is one of the old uh, the oldest li public libraries in Uganda. It serves as the information for the residents of Kampala, providing access to a large range of educational materials and information. So also we have to, when you're writing, try to ensure that you observe the neutral point of view. The neutral point of view comes in a way that when you're writing about the subject, you should be just reporting about the subject, not trying to sweeten it or showing bias about the subject. So I'll, I'll give an example. I may be writing about comparable and the information thing. And I start saying, can I read? Yes, please go ahead. Uh, I, I was just suggesting. <clears throat> Is it possible to highlight that city hall with the a Google map so that someone can hover to know the location of the city hall? Because I'm one person who has ever gotten lost in the city. You see the, the name of this, the building or the location, but you cannot really identify where it is. Yes, we are going to be adding all this information as we edit the art. Okay, we Thanks. have tried to add in more information and every information you add, ensure that you can refresh it. So after adding this information, I can choose to publish. So in my publishing, you're supposed to add an edit summary, describe what you change. So in my description, I've just added details. I've added details about the subject. And so you find out that this, this is a campaign which is ongoing in different parts of the Africa. And there are different, what I can say, hashtags, which are being used to track people who are contributing to the campaign. After adding what I've added, I can choose adding my hashtag so that in case of they are tracking people have contributed towards the campaign, my contributions can also appear. In this campaign, we have three hashtags which we are using. The first one is hash, hashtag Africa with challenge. 
Africa Week Challenge, comma, we have Ash so that in case they are trying to do what? In case they are tracking people who have contributed in relation to that campaign, you know, we're using hashtag tool, they can be able to see your contribution. And you might choose in case it's a minor edit, we have an option for minor edit, you can turn on if you don't want it to be just to consider it as a minor edit. And in case you're, you are interested in watching this page, so that in case any contribution which is made on this page, you can be notified. I might be the person who has wrote this page and I want to know how people are contributing towards it or is there any changes being made on this. You are free to watch this page. After that, you can publish your article. And your, your edits will be published. You see, you have tried to make it big. Uh, this is the section which I was talking about, the background, the education services, the partnership, and see also. I may want to add more information still. I'll come to my article and tap on edit. My editor will open, depending on the editor you're using. You might be, your editor may automatically open when it's on, maybe some edits which you can't, they, let me show you different edits. We have what we say, this is the visual editing which I was using. It appears the way you can see your Microsoft Word or Google Doc. It is just, you'll be writing mostly, and we also have the source editing. Source editing information will appear in form of codes. Standing on. You see? So this is source editing, and I'm gonna try to zoom for you so that you can see the difference between source editing Yes, so this is source editing. Unlike the other side where you, you just be writing, this one will be using sources calls to write our article. I won't drill too much about this because it may be not user friendly for a beginner. So I'll be asking you to concentrate on using the visual editing. So you may find out that when you open your editor or your, you want to start writing something and the information is appearing in this way, you're wondering why is it different? Well, as a people, it was different. So you can also turn it on and off by coming here. Wait, wait. trying to let me okay so on edit you tap on edit and it there is this symbol for Sorry for that, in case of any background noise. There is this symbol for a page where you can turn on, you can either choose visual editing or source editing. But for this context, I will uh, advise everyone to be using visual editing. So someone may be wondering, how can we add a mom? Uh, let's copy something from this page. You find out that this article, they have what we call this table which is on the side it is having also the map, the location, the type, the date it was established, collections, etc. So how do I also add this to my article? And also the coordinates. I'll come to my article 
on the part of editing when after opening the editor i go to the plus symbol where you see this add symbol you tap on insert and add a template we have what we say templates these are already existing uh they are existing information where you just be filling in what you want so we add what we call an info box uh that this sim this this table is called an info box it includes information which you may be interested to see about this topic written here it is basically a summary of what is here in a small in a table so i'll come here and search for info box however for info, info box we have different info boxes we have info box for journals, info box for organizations. Is it a tribe? It has different info box. When you want to add an info box for a book, it also have a different info box. Is it an institution? Depending on the type of the info box. So in this context, you might be interested to know which type of info box is this one. You can come and edit, come tap on edit. When you tap on edit, you can tap on this one. When you tap on this table, it will tell you this is a template generated from Infobox library. If it's a person, you say Infobox, a uh, template generated from Infobox person. So basically, it depends on the type of the article you're writing about. And you look for the, uh, for the Infobox what you need. Here we may need an info box for a library because we are writing about a library. You will come here in your search and tap in info box library. It, it will pop in to show an info box for library, which you can use when you're writing about a library. So I'll tap here and the template will pop up. So this is my template. It talks about the name of the library and the name of the library is Kampala. Kampala library. And information center. So from there, in case the library has a logo, yes, you can add the, li the logo of the library. In case it has an image, you're free to add an image. And you can add coordinates. How do I get a coordinate for, a, my, for my article which I'm looking for? And in this instance, we want to get the coordinates for the city hall. Because this library is located on the city hall. So I'll come to my browser and search for Kampala City Hall. It's here. So when it pops up, you can come to MAMP. You're interested in the MAMP of this place and when you come to the map it will bring out the map for the area let's see what the map looks like so where is kampala it is still loading It's loading just a minute so that we can press where the, the city hall is located. So my map is loading slowly. Forgive me about this. It's loading, yes.
As it's loading, you can respond to the question in the chat, Chris. I read for you. Uh, Chris. Yes, I'm responding. Uh, this one is asking when you create an article, does it go through an editorial review before appearing to the general public on Wikipedia? Yes, when you create an article and you submit, it's undergo a review. And when the article meets the criteria, it will be approved. You'll get a notification that your article has been reviewed or your article has been accepted. In case it doesn't meet the criteria, basically the, the policies which we govern the a good article is the neutral point of view the when the subject for instance the subject you're writing about should be notable is it writing a good writing that you're not biased on any side of the article basically you have to consider that your article the it undergoes review to ensure that all the information which is there is legit and if it is legit, it will be accepted by some admin who will approve it. If not, it will be flagged off for deletion. It will be nominated to be deleted or it will be speedily deleted. <laughs> yes. I think I'm, uh, is there any other question in the chat? Can you add an image or there should be specific specification on images? Yes, you can add an image on the article and after let's finish adding the coordinates. After adding the coordinates, we can look at how we can add an image. So you come here to the location of the article, you right click and here you will see the coordinates of the article zero plus 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 and also they are different you want the elections from here the election to here what's there but in this instance we are interested in the coordinates we shall tap on it the coordinates will be popped and you can come and paste here so you add what you add this, how do you call this symbol? Code, a symbol of code, then you press your code. So these are the coordinates. After adding, you may be having location. This is the location. The location is Kampala. Capital city. Okay. It's called Kampala KCC City Hall. That's the location. Uh, you may be interested in which city is located in Kampala City. Uh, Kampala. Uh, the region is in central region so which state uh we shall just go to the country country is uganda all this information is in the template you just be filling in in case you know when it was established that one established and you add that way uh, in case it has branches, for example, when you're writing about the Luaga Division branch, you can tap on add to add that it's a branch of Kampala Library and Information Center. In case you there's different information you can add, you can want to add a website. The website we shall be using a website for the website for KCC. Yeah? Where is it? Just come here. Because KCC. It's this one. They share the website because it's under KCC. So we I, shall I use Chris. Yes. We're going Drake. to try to summarize. Eh? We are being reminded about time. Yes. 
all right so we shall add this different information depending on the information you have the template is very big so whatever you can get is what you and add so after adding this you can insert the template there was an error and you can try to edit to remove the error It's not generally going to hard. Let me share why is it not accepting the code? What do we made an error in there? Okay, I shall let's try this. So how do I add an image? To add an image, depending on where you, you go to come and insert, tap on images and media. So it will take you to, it will take you here where it shows. Basically when you open here, it will take you most times to the images you have uploaded. However, you can first make a search on Wikimedia Commons, which is as where all photos which can be added to Wikipedia can be found. So we go to our Wikimedia Commons. And we see which photo do we want to add and how we can add it. So let me just come here. You search for a photo you want to add, and in this case, I'll search for KCCA in case there is any photo. I'll just talk about Wikimedia Commons. Wikimedia Commons is the photo all media database for all photos which can be added to Wikipedia where you get them. We, we get photos from Wikipedia, Wikimedia Commons, and that's where we can get all our photos we are interested in. So when even when you're uploading a photo to Wikipedia article, you don't just get it from your phone and upload. You have to add it to Wikimedia Commons. After adding it to Wikimedia Commons, you'll be able to add it to the to Wikipedia article. So how do I add to the Wikipedia article? Let me just use an example of an app. So I want to use this image. What I can do, there are different ways, but this is one of the ways. I copy the name of the image. And come here. Let me just pop. You come to the plus symbol. You want to add images and media. I see uh, this is how the dialog the dialog box will appear. And you come to search for media. You paste the, the the photo which you wanted to add, and it will pop up here. So I tap on the photo. I be like use this image. After using this image, you are required to give a description of the image so it can be like load section, load intersection. And on advanced, there is an option. Do you want your image to be on the left? Do you want it to be on the center or you want it to be on the right? Depending on where you want. For instance, I want it to be on the right. You can come. 
and adding. That's how you add an image. You can also add an image via the info box. There's an option for adding image. Uh, image. You can come here and you want to add image. So what you do, you can also copy. You get a photo which you have copied the other side and paste here. After pasting this photo, it pops up and you tap on it after you apply, apply changes. This photo will appear in the info box. So you can either add it to the info box or you can add it to the box. Is there any specific other question which I can answer before I go because we are running out of time? Sky, that's how you can add an image and how you can add an info box. Let me just collect this one. You may find you have made an illa wondering how they did it. Yes, you can come to the image, to the template of this article, which we are copying from. It's the National Library. And you see how they added their coordinates and where they added so that you can be able to see what you can add, what you can, you can do. Depending on any information you can get. Yes. Oh, did I add to that? Yeah, I uh, I hand over back to Drake. Take you through the next agenda. Uh, basically, that's how you can edit an article. Could be an existing article. Could be any article which is already existing. Yeah. Those are some of the questions. Um, just want to add an info box. You should know which info box I'm adding. Is it for a? Is it am I adding an info box for a library for a football club? Because different subjects have different info box templates. So it just depends on which template you want to use and which subject are you writing about. Hey Drake, can I hand over to you in case there is no another question? Or we can be answering these questions as we move on. Yeah, thank you so much, um, Bernard. I, you know I'm calling you Bernard, but I know you are Chris also. So we have two Chris's today. <laughs> thank you so much. I think questions can keep coming in as we do the next steps. I know it's been a roller coaster since nine. Uh, I, I know my people are, are, are ready to get their hands dirty, start working and contributing. However, uh, allow me as we proceed to chip in with the next steps. I know you might be having questions now saying, what next, what what do we do? I think it has been a roller coaster for you, especially the new ones. Some of the people who are here have never edited Wikipedia. So like today is your first time, don't worry. I think you've got the idea. Now we are going to get to work, okay? Uh, let me share my screen. If you can go back to this page, you know we've been handling um, editing, okay? There are some articles already put up here that require edits, okay? The list is here. You can pick it from, you know, did I reach here? If you go to the main page of the challenge, the, um, the Africa Week challenge, you see something like article list, this one. That's where you get those articles, but you are not supposed, it's not like you should remain and be stuck on those ones alone, no. I look for articles that are also in the same line with the topics, the focus areas for this year. I know we went through the focus areas which are here and make them more, more appealing to the general uh, viewership because we need to make them better. Most of these articles are not okay. And if you can do the ones of Uganda, you concentrate on the ones of Uganda, good. We can, we will be happy for that. But um, I'm looking at this in the general context. Uh, the Week for Education program is big. It is bigger than this. This is just part of the campaign. This is a campaign we are running for a short period of time, but we would like you to contribute generally to the Week for Education this year. So if we go back to this, 
uh, this particular place, which is the landing page for our user group. Is everyone able to see my screen? I can see. Thank you so much. I would like you to, when I shared an email yesterday, I shared these links. I would like you to register to, on both this one, which is the dashboard for the week, uh, week for education training, and this one, which is the Africa Challenge, so that when you are contributing, your contributions go both ways, okay? We track them twice. Eh? I would like that because it, it, it feeds into our statistics at the end of the year. So I shared those dashboards yesterday in an email. I know some people registered in the morning. You didn't receive that email. I'll reshare it again. However, please remember to uh, sign on on both dashboards. So this one looks like this. Let me open it. And this one looks like this. So the first one is for the campaign, which we've concentrated mostly on today, which is this. The other one is for the program this year, which is this one. So I would like you to register on both. I think I, I cannot overemphasize that. Please register on both because of the reasons I'm going to explain later. This one is tracking what is being done throughout the year. This one, the week education training for 20, uh, 2020 for Uganda. However, this one is an international or continental challenge, which has so many countries. So the winnings, the winnings for this particular one, let me go look at them. I know the, the information is in the cities, but you will be able to to convert it in Ugandan currency. They couldn't use the, 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 uh, the US dollars, but there's money to win at the continental level. Not money, but prizes. We call them prizes normally. Weak media does not normally give you money, call it cash, but we call it, uh, we call them prizes. So there are things to win, okay? I'm still looking, just a moment. I think it will be here. So if you look at this particular graphic, I hope it has loaded your side. You see, there is between 10,000, the first prize um, Africa-wise is going to go uh, to the tune of 10,000 CDs. I cannot tell you how much that is in USD, but it's a lot of money. Then the second one will be 6,000 CDs. And the third person will win 3,500 CDs. Then the top female contributor will get 4,000 CDs. And also the best photo uploaded on Wikimedia Commons in this particular challenge, you will earn someone 4,000 CDs. This is at the continental level. However, in Uganda, we have also arranged to award. We have arranged to award you. Uh, let me go to the next screen with the next steps. So the continental level, the campaign is on 30th. The winnings, you've seen them. For Uganda, we, we, are, we are going to locally extend up to 31st July, this particular competition only up to 31st July, so you can continue contributing even beyond the 30th of June. And then, as I've said, register on both the dashboards. Please register on them. I've showed you how to do that. Just come here uh, on the menu. Just go to Google and put in Wikimedia Community User Group Uganda. It will bring you to this page. And when you reach the main page, you just go to, just a moment, let me move this. Show you how the landing page will look like. It will normally look like this. So just proceed on events and projects here. Once you click there, it will bring you to this particular area. So look at the Africa Week Challenge. Don't click on this link or this one, no. Click on these two dashboard, dashboard, these ones. But please, before you do that, make sure you have a Wikipedia or Wikimedia account because we shall not be able to track what you do without those accounts. So please register on both. Once you have done that, you will be eligible to win the local awards also. Uh, before I mention what we are going to give, who and who and what and what, we have also what we call swag. This is swag, these are normal items that we brand and give out, depending on how someone has contributed to the campaign, even though, even though they have not won. So with us here, we have branded pens, we have branded notebooks, and branded jumpers. These are winnings that we are there for us if we actively contribute. So. Have that in mind as you contribute. Then the best three contributors shall win. Uh, the first one will win a voucher of 300,000. This will be good for Christmas shopping, okay? And we plan to give this one out in October. So you have a lot of time to contribute. Don't sleep. Then the first runner up will win 250,000 Uganda shillings. That's a voucher, shopping voucher. 
Uh, second runner up, 150,000. And the third one, third runner up, will win 100,000. Then, because we are looking at ensuring equity in how we do our things, we are also going to award the best female contributor. The best female contributor in this campaign will win 100,000 Uganda shillings. Then the best new contributor, when we say new contributor to someone who has not been on Wikipedia, they have recently registered and they have contributed massively. So the one who will be at the top among the new ones will win 100,000 Uganda shillings. Then lastly, but not finally, we have data support for you. As you contribute, we are going to be giving you some small amounts of data to help you make your contributions throughout this period. So if you feel that you don't have enough data to help you make contributions, you, we are going to share with you a form where you will write and ask for data support. That data will be coming in small, little by little, depending on the times. So, and also for those who have attended today, we are going to also support you with some little data refund for your time and the data you've used to attend this session. So uh, thank you so much for listening to me. I see there must be, there might, might be something in the chat. Yes, so good motivation. I okay. I thought. Thank you, Edward. I thought you, there was a question. So please just uh, stay tuned, contribute, and reach out to us in case there are challenges. I've shared my. Oh, Marshall, you raised the hand. It's okay. I'm going to give you. I shared my contacts when I shared the email, but also if you don't know my contact, uh, I would love you to join the WhatsApp group. We have a WhatsApp group for week eight. I will share the link later on so that you can join. I have all your emails and then you'll be able to join so that we keep in touch. Also remember to share. There are hashtags, hashtags that we can use when you share on X and the other platforms. The hashtags are here. Let me hope they are here. So you can use any of these hashtags as you share on your social media with the, the, the different things that you do in this campaign. Uh, Chris, I believe you have something to tell to, to say. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Greg. Uh, one of which you have talked about. Yes, we have a WhatsApp group. I would encourage all of you to join it so that it becomes easier for you to be helped. In case of any challenge, feel free to post your challenge in the group and we shall respond to you accordingly. Uh, we shall are based on the editing. Don't hesitate to ask questions. Feel free to ask many questions as you can. And also in case you may need some further one-on-one -on -one editing training, you can ask me, you can talk to Drake, and we shall be able to help you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Also, please don't go off. We are going to take a group photo in a moment. But also, Chris Liberty has something to say. Ah, Dick has suffered with a number of Chris's in this house. <laughs> okay, just so, ah, seems you can't yeah. see me well. See. Eh, okay. So I'm already trying on one of the jumpers for those who are going to win. Um, it's here. I feel fancy. It looks fancy. Ah, the camera hasn't. Okay, no, it's still blurry. there. It's but blurry. No, it's Ah, okay. Ah, okay. You can see me? Can you see me properly? All right. Fantastic. So I want, let me unblur the background. So um, I would encourage you to actually take this seriously. We have a few days, but I know we can still get this um, across the line. So I would encourage you to reach out definitely um jake has announced the awards for those who are going to win i would like you to know that um the dashboard that we use collects everything that you input those who know how to input wikidata wikipedia photos images any of them just make sure that you develop a strategy at least do not spend a day without going opening your wikipedia account and adding something but very few days and you can use them to um to edit now i wanted to also talk about the data that we're going to provide when we are doing the the editing 
just as a caution, maybe I want to be the, um, the one to break this bad news. You will not get data if you have not made any simple edit or entry. So even though we'll provide data for you to make these edits, you will not get if you're not making any edits. But if you have already on your dashboard made an edit, you are free to ask for airtime, MBs, internet, so that you can um, get data support. That's all I wanted to say. I see there are many questions. I'll leave them to the break to respond. Uh, thank you so much. And may the um, best five win everything there is to win. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Uh, I think he has said everything I had wanted to say, but I had skipped and more. So, Yes, let's get to let's get to work. Do we have any questions? Let me check. Okay, okay. Sharon. Um, how are the screenshot is for what okay? I didn't receive this email. Yeah, I'm going to resend it. Yeah, I sent it at night to only those who had already registered, okay? Yes, the recording will also be shared. We've been recording throughout. You shall receive it so that you catch up with anything that you might have missed. Thank you. This is Julie Rin and uh, Sharon. Thank you for those questions, and I think I have answered them. Uh, unless if we have any other questions that have not been responded to, please, you can say them. Hmm, who is this one sharing this? this yes, that, that was the message. Okay, if you didn't receive it, I'm going to reshare it. Hey, that's what is in my email. I get it, Sharon, now. Thank you. So I would like to let you Put on your camera as those of you who can, then we take that final um, photo. If you can't, it's not a problem, but we'll be happy if there's a, at least a profile picture on your Zoom account. Yes, so let me stop sharing my screen so that we have a full screen. Okay, okay, okay. Keep them coming. All right. I'm waiting for a few. Okay. Uh, Tekla, uh, Elizabeth, Peter, Moses. Uh, are you here? Hello. Moses. Okay, maybe they are not here. So guys, get, get ready for the picture. The moment, let's wait for Chris. Okay, I think I can take now. You can smile now. All right, that is done. Thank you so much. You can switch off your, your cameras now. Bye-bye. Have a wonderful day. And thank you for tuning in. Thank you too.